I'm loving the I'm loving the zeal right now. Wow, you can feel the you can feel the heat in this room. It's, yeah, the, the heat indeed did rise. And so, good evening, everyone. My name is Rachel, as Josie kindly introduced. Um, and it's a privilege to speak to all of you this evening. Thank you, Frankie, for giving me the opportunity to share. And so, the ability to pursue a goal or passion over time and stick with it if we encounter obstacles or setbacks. To continue in the course of action, even in the face of difficulty or with little or no indication of success. And one of the important Christian traits to finish off this incredible race. That is perseverance. And let me tell you, let me tell you, perseverance is hard. I can't recall a time when persevering was easy. However, in this day and age, especially the younger generation, we all want it easy. We don't want to work hard or stay in the hard work to attain great results. I have been given the charge, perseverance in worship. My one and only point tonight is perseverance takes resistance. Let's turn turn our Bibles to Galatians chapter 6. So Galatians chapter 6, if we read verse 9, it says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at a proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So the word weary here, the Greek word is akekkaio, meaning to be utterly spiritless, to be wearied out, to be exhausted. And you know when someone is spiritless, there's no joy, there's no passion, there's no zeal. It's as if you've already given up. And the word good in the Greek is kalos, meaning beautiful. Excellent, precious, useful, valuable, and virtuous. So the Bible says, let us not grow spiritless in doing what is valuable and virtuous. How convicting is that? Share your faith as a disciple. That's valuable and virtuous. Having Bible studies, following up, evangelism. Those are all valuable and virtuous. But how about your worship? You see, the Bible doesn't only call us to not grow spiritless in our evangelism, in follow-up and and in Bible studies, but to not grow spiritless in our worship. So how was your worship this morning, sisters? It was a great question. Okay, cool. How was your worship last week? How was your worship this month? Was it spirit-less or was it spirit-led? So you see... You see, sisters, when you're spirit-less, you give up easily. Wow. When you're spirit-led, you persevere. Come on. But what does prayer of perseverance look like? So at the end of verse 9, it simply says, do not give up. Mm-hmm. Perseverance in worship takes resistance, mm-hmm. which means a refusal to comply or accept wow. something. And you know, God teaches you things in very unexpected ways. Yes. For the last two weeks, I was blessed with a throat infection. Nice. <laughs> I was at home all day, all week. And there was a big temptation to lounge and rest around. However, being ill helped me to see that I need to worship God way much more. Or I'll give in to temptation rather than resist the temptation, especially growing idle. Who here loves working out? Nice. Some. <laughs> okay. I love me a good workout session. So, I don't know if anyone knows what the plank is. Do you know what a plank is? So you're like on the floor and then you're like leaning. Yeah, it's it's a great, it's great for your abs. Um, Imagine doing a plank for one minute. 10 seconds go by. 20 seconds go by. 30 seconds go by. 40 seconds. 45 seconds, your body's like... (laughs) You're you're shaking. And then the last 15 seconds, which really feel like a whole other minute. You then drop at the last 10 seconds. You didn't persevere. How would that make you feel afterwards? Defeated, right? You could have been, if only I just stayed those 10 seconds more. You did the 45 seconds. What? Like, you could have finished. Imagine what those extra 10 seconds would have done for you. Those 10 extra seconds in prayer. 
God may have revealed something to you. Those 10 extra seconds reading the Bible. The next thing you could have read could have been that golden nugget. You would have been like, wow, I can't help but share my faith now. 10 extra seconds worshipping God could have made the difference between you being spiritual or unspiritual toward that sister. A few questions. When you're sick, do you give up on worship? Yes, get rest, but are you resting in God? Psalm 91. It says, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of of the Almighty. When you're discouraged, do you give up worshipping in God? When you're feeling a lot, do you give up on worship? You know you can pray more, but it just feels too much. Even when God blesses you with fruit, do you still worship God? Or do you think you're above worshipping God? Absolutely not. The only reason why every single one of us is here today is because of your individual worship, your individual relationships with God. Worship is your spiritual muscle that constantly needs to be worked. And it is the driving force of everything that you do. So what stops us from persevering? It's just that we don't want to go through the pain in our worship because we believe that we can do it on our own or worse, we believe that God can't help us. But think about Hannah in 1 Samuel 1. What if she didn't persevere in praying to God? Her deep anguish would have controlled her. Think about Job. Despite all that happened to him, he still praised God. And what about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane? He prayed for three hours. He could have easily stopped praying to God. And yet some of us struggle praying half an hour to God every single day. And sisters, I encourage you, Stay in the pain. Perseverance takes resistance. A refusal to comply to the victim's mentality. A refusal to comply to the heart's impurity. A refusal to comply to Satan's false security and temporary things. But how do we go after persevering in worship? Practicals. What are you doing to make your worship special? Here I have a, I have a special little book. This is my prayer request book. I was, gifted to, I was gifted this by a sister two years ago during the lockdown. And I started writing prayer requests in it. I left it for a few years. I went back to it because I was like, I need to amp my relationship with God again. I look into it. I look at all the things I prayed for two years ago. I cross things out that God has answered. I promise you, when you start this, you will see God's faithfulness. How much of, how much of the Bible are you reading? However much you're reading, whether one page, whether one chapter, whether 10 chapters, I encourage you, read more. Get to know God. The more you know God, the more you can worship Him. And how many worships, how worship songs do you know? I would encourage you to learn more. Psalm 105 verse 2 says, Sing to Him, sing praise to Him, tell of all His wonderful acts. And I would like to finish with a quote. Keep on going. And the chances are that you will stumble on something, perhaps when you are least expecting it. I never heard of anyone ever stumbling on something sitting down. And to God be all the glory. Yeah, I really need to take those notes off you, sis. And, but yeah, evening, everyone, sisters, beautiful people. So nice to uh, see you all in the back there as well. Uh, thank you so much, Frankie, for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, so the charge I've been given today is not giving in to defeat. <laughs> so, point one, be on God. So if you can turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. So what does it mean to be on your guard? Hmm. It means you have to be alert. You have to be watchful. Um, and yeah, you just have to be ready. So we all know that the queen sadly passed away recently. Um, and they had the queen lying in state. I don't know how many of you got to watch it, but it was like 24 hours, just like the BBC was just broadcasting it. And if you saw, they had guards that were like surrounding her. And 
the Queen has loads of different sorts of guards. There's loads of different sorts of guards that exist in this country. Oh. And one of the ones that you guys might be familiar with are the Coldstream guards. So you're, they're the ones with the fuzzy yeah. black yeah. hats that look like a long microphone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so um, they're actually known for their unflinched discipline. Wow. So they're extremely alert and watchful. You'll see them outside of Buckingham Palace yes. as well if you've been there. And if you come close to them and dare touch them or their horses or anything yeah. that they have, they will literally bark at you. Like, wow. they will wow. command you, like, get if they're holding, if they've got a weapon, like, stay back. Like, wow. you know, they, they take real honour in guarding everything that they've been told to guard. Wow. Um, wow. So they're trained. They're trained not to be defeated. Wow. And that's how we need to be sisters if we are to be undefeated. We need to be on guard. So 1 Corinthians 16, 13 says, be on guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong. So the only way we can be defeated is if you're not watchful. It's if we're not watchful. If you're not on guard. So think about a boxer. I'm sure you guys have seen lots of boxers. Um, they always have to have their guard up, right? Like up to the face like this. Um, otherwise, they'll be knocked out. Um, and if we're not on our guard, we can be knocked out too, sisters. <laughs> we can be divided, actually. You know, stuff like if we're not, if our guard's up, not like this, so many things can creep in. Pride can creep in. That's a big thing I struggle with. Sin can creep in. Um, and false doctrine can get us completely knocked out the ring. Um, so stand firm in the faith. Do we believe in the Bible? Yes. Okay. Do we have faith in God? Yes. Great. <laughs> I was hoping those were the answers. Because if you do... You can stand firm. And then you can be strong. Um, And I really want to lift up an awesome sister, Hannah. This Hannah. This is this is kind of cute. It's part of the yeah, Yeah. number three. Um, and as most of you know, her sister was um actually uh sedated in ICU, intensive care unit, right? Which is literally the unit that people right after that, you know, sadly they they pass away. And Hannah, you really stood firm in your faith. Like you rallied sisters to come around and pray with you. And then before we know it, you're sending us a message saying that your sister's out of the ICU. Now that's awesome. Um, And, you know, Hannah could have fallen off. But she stood firm in her faith. Amazing. Point two, fight. Don't give in. (sighs) Some of us give in. We don't fight, and that's why we get defeated. Um, You know, you don't just fall into sin. Like, you gave into it without a fight. So most times we get defeated is because we don't struggle through. And struggling, actually, people think to struggle just means to be, like, down. No, to actually struggle means to fight through, to fight, you know. And this can be maybe because we get, or we don't want to, but then also it could be because we get distracted, and if you go to Hebrews 12, verse 1, Come on, sir. I'm going to read the, the TPT version so you guys can follow along. But the TPT version really hits this point. And it says, as for us, we have all of these great witnesses who encircle us like clouds. So we must let go of every wound that has pierced us wow. and the sin we so f- easily fall into. Then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion and determination for the path has already been marked out before us. So for me, as some of you may know, addiction of food, especially sugary foods, is actually a very big stumbling block in my life. Um, I was actually just talking about it earlier with our dear sister Sandra. So the definition of addiction is a compulsive need for and use of a habit-forming substance. Mm. This means the substance has power over you, Mm. essentially. So if you have an addiction, then really you've already been defeated. Yeah. Um, So my substance is sugar. What's the substance for you guys? Mm. Like who, it may not be a substance. Who is that person for you? That thing that you're relying on to just get you through the day. 
um, that thing that you're really dependent on. Dependent on. Um, and the center of dependency is actually based on a lie. Mm. And what stops us from overcoming our defeat is the lie which we depend on. I hope we're getting the full circle here. Yeah. So the lies that we're depending on, the people we're depending on, are all distractions wow. that can make us just lose our focus and give in to defeat. And First Peter chapter 5, from verse 5 it reads in the same way you who are younger submit yourselves to your elders all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud me but shows favor to the humble Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. So I've allowed fitness to defeat me. My thoughts about the way to defeat me. Motherhood can defeat me. Um, But really and truly, it's my pride from this scripture. If I'm not casting my anxiety to God, then I will be defeated. So sisters, we need to resist, resist. Stop being a victim, fight, be alert. Um, There's a noticeable difference between being a victim and giving in and actually fighting and struggling through your sin and trying to get through it. So in closing, um, and I'll read this scripture. You don't need to go there. In 1 Corinthians six twelve, says, I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. Mm. Like, I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered, which also means enslaved by anything. Mm. So another version says enslaved there. So to be enslaved means to be defeated. Mm. So Paul is saying here, no wavering, no double-mindedness. Mm. Take a stand. Uh-huh. Let us not be defeated, but let us use God's word to not give in to defeat. So my practical for you is confess the, thing, confess the things that are making you feel defeated and just make a stand, draw a line and say no more. Um, you won't allow those things to defeat you anymore. And tell your discipler or the person who invited you today or the person next <laughs> to you, just be open. Um, and that will really help you to be accountable to them. Oh, to God be all the glory. Yeah. And now I'm going to invite my wonderful sister Josie. Oh, I'm going to just pray. Yeah. Um, God, thank you so much for hearing just these incredible messages, God. Mm-hmm. Um, totally from you god like even as even whilst they were going on god i was just like man you're talking to me right now thank you god for your personal messages that we get through the bible Mm -hmm. i pray god that um they continue to stay in our hearts father i pray god please speak through me god and help me lord um to be a servant god always and forever in jesus name i've prayed amen Amen. 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 hey family okay so um my topic is is perseverance with women studying the Bible. Oh, and just before I speak, I just want to give a, a round of applause to all the women that have spoken already because yeah. they've just done such an incredible job. Um, and I just, I just want to be open, guys. I was feeling so insecure oh. today. I was just like letting Satan get in there in my mind and just like fear of just tiredness but um it's okay because actually i got so strengthened from hearing you guys sing hearing the welcome and hearing the messages have really helped me a lot so thank you guys all right so perseverance perseverance the definition from perseverance means persistence in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success so let's turn to first corinthians 13 8 i'm just gonna put this here So 1 Corinthians 13, 8. Come on, Daisy. <laughs> and the Bible says, 
Love never fails. And what is love? God is love. So God never fails. So with God never failing, okay, with God never feeling a failure, we only have delayed success. We never have failure when we're walking with God. All we have is delayed success. And a persevering woman is a woman who actually perseveres for women. So a woman that actually is willing to go out of her way to persevere for other women. So I want us just to do this little practical. Just close your eyes. Okay. And just take a deep breath. (coughs) And I want us to just picture you're on a cloud. And on this cloud, you see another cloud. (laughs) And on this other cloud, you see beautiful red hair and you see dimples and you see beautiful green eyes and you see Frankie. And she's like, hey, nice to see you. (laughs) And then on the other cloud, you see um, a really hench, uh, black, bold guy. (laughs) And you see another Asian lady and you see our leaders from the European world sector. You see Michael Michelle. And next to you, you see Andrea, and you see your other sisters in Christ. And behind you, you turn around and you see your family. You see your mother, Mm -hmm. and your mother says, thank you for not giving up on me. And you see your brother, and he says, he shakes his head, he's speechless. And you all look up to God, and God says, well done, good and faithful servants. Mm -hmm. And I just want us to open our eyes because the whole point of persevering, Mm. what is the goal? It talks about having a goal. It talks about having success in something. Our goal, our ultimate goal is heaven. And it's Mm. our ultimate goal is that everyone, we want everyone to make it. You will look up and you want to see God saying, well done. Mm. Do you believe that this is possible? Because you know what it is. In Jeremiah 32 verse 27, the Bible says, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? There is nothing too hard for God. It is impossible to persevere if we don't believe in his promises. What are you persevering for? Why would you enter a race if you know you're going to lose? Why would you take a degree if you know you're going to fail? So why would you persevere with God if you think he's going to fail? Because you know what? He's not going to fail. God is not a failure or a loser. The only thing that God knows how to do is win. And we're here to serve the winner. If you believe that in God's power, you'll believe in his promises. And this is one of the most powerful promises in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Come on, Chelsea. Come on, Chelsea. This is awesome. It says, this is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to knowledge of the truth. This is God's promise for us. He wants all people to be saved. When we believe in this promise, then we're going to persevere for it. We're going to fight. You know what, God? You said that. You said you want all people to be saved. So that means that person that I did my first ever Bible study with, that pers- the first person I ever shared my faith with, I believe, you believe that you want that person to be saved. So I believe it. And, and we need to also set, I'll set my second point is we also need to believe that we've been chosen. Because we can believe it, but we can and then limit God because we don't believe that we're the person that has been chosen to do that. In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. It says, but you are a chosen people a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. We are chosen. You don't need to be worried about being picked if you know you've been chosen. In Ephesians 2, verse 10, it 
It says, for we are God's handiwork, Mm -hmm. created in Christ Jesus to do the good works which God has prepared in advance for us to do. Mm -hmm. So when he was knitting us together in our mother's womb and knew who the woman that we turn out to be, he knew exactly what we were going to do. Mm -hmm. God specifically chose you to reach out to the women that you have reached out to. Mm -hmm. It's no mistake. And it's definitely no mistake. And I I just want to talk about just two women here, actually quite a few women here, um, that I'm really grateful that God has brought into my life but specifically um maria because if you know who i am write a list of everything that i (laughs) am not and that's maria like we're we're each other we're each other's opposites yeah (laughs) sorry not in a bad way like i'm not i'm not she's athletic she's funny i'm like awkward and i have to chill and she's just like a go-getter so we have completely the opposite personalities But God has enabled that to happen. He specifically chose that so that no one could brag and say, well, it was because of my gym skills or it was because because I was so intellectually smart in physics. Like God's like, no, so that you can give me all the praise. Amen. Um, God is deliberate in who he chooses to share our faith with. And you do not need to worry about... Yeah, sorry, I've said that already. So let's go to Mark 5, verse 25 to 28. And the Bible says, And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all that she had, she had. yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, If I could just touch his clothes, I would be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from suffering. At once, Jesus realized that her power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see people crowding against you, his disciples answered. And yet you asked, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Mm. And um, this passage here just really... It really hits home because so many times we think that we're like, oh, yeah, I did like 10 follow up calls. I I followed up with people. We persevere with people. But people are persevering with pain. You know, people stay in pain for such a long time and they feel the effects of that. And this bleeding woman was subject to pain for 12 years. Mm -hmm. And the pain that we feel from sacrificing a bit of time is nothing in comparison to the pain that people feel Mm -hmm. from staying in sin. And their goal to to persevere in their sin is because they think it's going to make them happy. But our goal to persevere with other women is because we know how they're going to find heaven and find God. And um, another thing that I just was really touched by Jesus is that he didn't, um, (laughs) it doesn't say here that he he texts who touched my clothes. Mm -hmm. He didn't, uh, you know, just... uh, send like you know a message like he went actively to call who touched me there was a crowd there was busyness but he called them up and said who touched me who touched me and I think this really hits home because um there was times where I would in my heart sometimes my heart wanted to just call up um Ruta back in the days when we were studying or Esther and and Maria and just be like oh do you want to come to church but there was times where God was like, why don't you just ask them how they're doing? Why don't you just call them up just to call them up? Why does it always have to be that way? Why don't you just love them and see what God can do? And I think this is something that God does for us because you know what? God stays in there for so much more longer. Like all, I, all I've done is like four years, four years maximum of follow-up. But God, in De- Deuteronomy 31 verse 8. Come on, Josie. Come on, In verse 8, it says, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Does God give up on us? Has God ever given up on us? Who has been the biggest perseverer out of all? 
God. He said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. I'll persevere with you. And God has been persevering with us for 20 or 30, however old we were when we became disciples. God stayed with us day, 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 thinking maybe today she'll bump into someone. Watching us, watching us hear maybe a, a, a worship song and, and watching us turn back to sin. Like God has been there persevering. You know what? Tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going to put something on her heart that's going to change her heart and make her seek me. And I just really want to lift up um, today just want to lift up you Esther um you are yeah I'm really proud of you you've grown tremendously and um yeah I remember studying the bible with you and you were like the age of 16 sharing like all the things that you had been through and I was like man how can this happen to a 16 year old girl um but just help me to see like yeah God's just been staying in that for that whole time and um perseverance isn't it's not the point of baptism that we persevere we persevere to the end um Naomi if she sees this I'm persevering with you persevere with the with us with each other even when we're in difficult times even when we are disciples we've got to stay in that so I have uh, one practical uh I've got one actually I've got three practicals (laughs) Um, uh, some I want us to just go after reaching out to three people someone you studied with before um, if you discipled someone that fell away, call them and reach out to a family member. Okay. If you can be saved, why can't someone else? Yeah. And to God be all the glory. Amen. 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 Amen.